Hi, welcome to the making of Joe Lightning Part 1. In this video, I'll go over the GoZ process with Character Creator 3. Okay, let's get started. I like to start with some concept drawings, mainly a body sketch to brainstorm a few body types and silhouettes. With the body proportions established, I can layer on concepts for the clothing and play around with some ideas, like this 80s rock star superhero, an evil version of the rock star superhero, then this Muay Thai style. This last sketch is important because this cubic style is what I really like, and ultimately is the look I'll be going for. I have also sketched a front view as a reference. You may even find it necessary to sketch a side and quarter view, depending on the complexity of the character. I recommend that you pay special attention to proportions where most of the style is evident. For Joe, I'll be elongating his neck, enlarging the hands and feet to make his gestures more expressive. Likewise, lengthening the arms below the point of his hips and the legs so that they extend beyond the half point of his body. Okay, let's move on to create the base model. Start off in Character Creator and I'll load the standard mail as a base model. Right click drag the front view reference image directly into the scene. This creates an image plane that can be placed anywhere in the scene, just like a regular 3D object. Let's put the plane directly behind the character. This is so the camera focal length is less of a factor. Also, you can turn on wireframe or x-ray view to see through the character in order to place it in the right spot. You should also scale the reference image according to the height or width of the default character. Now simply click and drag to scale up and down the individual body parts to match the reference image. If your character has really exaggerated features, you can push the morphs beyond their limits by baking the current set and reiterating on the process. For example, by selecting the currently used section, I can see all of the currently active sliders. Then I'll simply press this bake button to bake all of the morph shapes into this character model. And now I can continue to use the morph sliders on a blank slate to further push and pull on the model.
Once you have the correct proportions, you can send the figure over to ZBrush by pressing this Go Z button. Make sure the template is set to Create, and split body part according to what you'll want to sculpt in ZBrush. In this case, I'll just toggle everything on as a demonstration. ZBrush will automatically open, so just drag out the figure on the empty canvas. Now notice that my brush size is too small, even when maxed out. You'll need to configure the brush size because Character Creator is based on real-world units, which is about 2 meters tall for the standard figure. Do this by going to the Draw Settings under Preferences and increase the max brush size to the largest possible amount and enlarge the dynamic brush scale. I like to set it to 10. Now, the brush is at a convenient size for this figure. Let's look at the subtools list and notice the parts that were split in Character Creator. We have the tongue, eyelashes, eye sockets, tear ducts, mouth cavity, fingernails, and toenails. And of course the base body, which I'll subdivide and start sculpting on. I suggest that you focus on the big structures, then work down to the details. Okay, let's skip forward to the final sculpted model. Clocking in at 5 subdivisions, which makes this polygon very dense. But the actual density that will be sent to Character Creator is the one in which it came in at, which is the base level subdivision. Hit the Go Z button inside ZBrush to send the figure back into Character Creator. I'll just select the Update Mesh Only option because I just want to change the shape of the character. And there it is. We have successfully brought in the modeling done in ZBrush in the Character Creator. Now this is just a bare naked body, which will look more like ZBrush Sculpt when we apply the Normals and Ambient Occlusion map later down the road. At this point, you should check the placement of the eyes and teeth. Go to Modify Open Mouth to look at the placement of the upper and lower teeth. Now, in order to adjust the position of the jaws and eyes, we'll have to go to the Attributes tab and activate the Adjust Bones tool. Just click on the Face option to show the bones of the head. However, when I move the bones of the face, nothing really happens to the eyes and jaws. This is because I can adjust the position of the bones separately from the position of the eyes and jaws. In order to sync these elements, I have to enable the Include Eyes or Teeth option. Now, when the bone is moved, the element that depends on it also moves along with it. For the teeth, I recommend turning on the X-ray mode for the figure so you can see through it. Same as the eyes, I can just move the bones to reposition the upper and lower teeth. Now that's done, click on the Adjust Bones button to exit this mode and cement the changes.
Now we can perform a few tests for the facial expressions with the motion tools. Let's zoom in on the face a bit. Inside the Edit Facial tool, I can select the eyeballs directly, then drag out on the empty black space in the panel to rotate them. We can also perform some facial expression tests. Okay, that's the end of part 1 for this tutorial. In The Making of Joe Lightning Part 2, I'll talk about generating textures in ZBrush and how to modify and apply them to this character. Then I'll walk through posing and clothing inside Character Creator. Thanks for watching.